Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about what is streaming API in Salesforce and uh, what is the need of the streaming API. And then we'll see a demo using one of the event of the streaming API. So let's start. So firstly, let's discuss what is streaming API in Salesforce. So streaming API is uh, based on the Bayox protocol and it enables streaming of events using push technology and provides a subscription mechanism for receiving events in near real time. The streaming API subscription mechanism supports multiple types of events, including push topics, platform events, change data capture events, and generic events. So we'll see what are uh, those events uh, later in the session. So basically streaming API is based on the publisher subscriber method where uh, uh, the client uh, publishes the event and the subscribers subscribes to that event through a channel. Uh, so a channel would be created and the subscriber would subscribe to that channel and uh, they'll receive notifications related to any changes, record changes, etc. So uh, streaming API is asynchronous in nature and the format which is used is JSON. Uh, so now let's see the architecture of streaming API. So uh, uh, at the top you can see there is the event producer. So event producer are those which creates event and publishes them uh, onto a channel. And those events are in Salesforce. Those events are stored in the event bus. So uh, event uh, and all the consumers of those event will subscribe to the event bus and they'll see if uh, there is any change in the event. If yes, uh, they'll receive uh, once uh, the, the notification is received, they have subscribed to the channel and they'll receive the notification that any changes to the record has been made. So uh, now the next question is uh, when to use streaming API. So we will use streaming API to receive near real time streams of data that are based on changes in Salesforce records or custom payloads. For uh, Salesforce record changes, Salesforce publishes notification when the changes occur. For custom notifications, we can publish message events, uh, event messages. Subscribers can receive notification using Comet-D, uh, which is an implementation of the Biox protocol that simulates push technology. This can also subscribe to some type of events with Apex triggers or uh, declaratively using Flow Builder and Process Builder. So uh, I guess uh, for, uh, for platform events, we can use triggers and Process Builder or Flow Builder to subscribe. For other type of events, we can, uh, we can use Comet-D. Uh, which is the implementation of the Bayox protocol to subscribe. So let's say we have two systems, Salesforce and SAP. So uh, where the data is in sync. Uh, now let's say that some a user makes a change uh, to any record in Salesforce. So how would SAP be able to know that? So uh, now we will use, uh, we can use any of the streaming API event. Let's say we use a change data capture and uh, uh, whenever there is a change on Salesforce, uh, there will be a notification or a message uh, that will be published to the channel and SAP will subscribe to that channel to uh, know about the change and make the necessary changes in their system. So this is how uh, we can use uh, streaming API in Salesforce. Uh, now let's see the types of events that are available. So firstly is the push topic. So push topic is a uh, old technology. So basically uh, what we do is we define all our schema in the SQL query and then uh, any changes to Salesforce record uh, gets published based on the SQL query that we define. So we'll create a push topic which will create a channel and that channel will, uh, the, uh, the subscriber will subscribe to that channel. Uh, that push topic channel to receive any notification, the payload uh, which we have defined in the SQL query. So that uh, will be uh, sent in the message that is subscribed, uh, that is getting subscribed by the channel. So now uh, the second type of event is change data capture event. So change data capture uh, uh, has been introduced by Salesforce uh, lately. So uh, any changes to Salesforce uh, records will be published with all the change fields. So we don't have a, uh, we, we can't customize the payload here. So all the fields will be published once any changes are done to the Salesforce record. Uh, 
So uh, CDC supports more standard objects than push topic events and provides more features such as header fields that contain more information about the change. So, uh, so uh, ch change data capture events is uh, completely uh, without any customization. Uh, I'll, uh, we will see a demo of CDC in the next video. Uh, in this video, we'll see uh, our demo about push topic. Uh, so let's see the third type of event that is platform event. So platform event is a completely customized payload, uh, which uh, with a predefined schema will create an object. It is just like a custom object where we, we can define a custom payload and the data can be anything you defi we define, including business data, such as order information. Uh, then after that uh, platform event is published event uh, we'll use a apex uh, apex method event bus dot publish to publish that platform event and after that uh, whoever is subscribing to that channel message channel for the platform event will receive notifications so platform events gives us the ability to customize the payload we send in the message so now let's see some additional info. So Salesforce stores push topic events, generic events and standard volume events for 24 hours and high volume events for 72 hours in the event bus. So high volume events include platform events and change data capture events. And standard volume events are no longer available and include only events defined before spring 19 release. Uh, maximum number of delivered event notification within a 24 hour period shared by all comedy clients uh, is 1 uh, million for uh, performance and unlimited editions. If we exceed the default event delivery allocation, we receive a 404 organization total events a daily limit exceeded error. So now we'll see a demo of push topic. So uh, we'll use Workbench to subscribe to the Push Topic channel and receive real-time notifications. Uh, so the channel name for Push Topic would be slash topics slash the Push Topic name which we create in Apex, which we'll see in a little while. Push Topic events provide a secure and scalable way to receive notification for changes to Salesforce data that matches the SQL query we define as uh, I explained earlier. Now we can use push topic events to receive notifications of Salesforce record changes, including create, update, delete, and undelete operations. Capture changes for uh, push topics capture changes for the fields and records that match a SQL query. Uh, so the user will only receive change notification for the records which he has access to based on the sharing rules. So now let's see a demo uh, of uh, push topics in our org. So, uh, so we have a developer console. Uh, so we, uh, in the developer console, I've opened the execute anonymous window. So, uh, I have created a push topic whose name is, uh, account push topic. And I've created, I've, uh, this is the query, uh, in the push topic. So all the records that are, uh, uh, that are qualified for this query that fit in this query, uh, for those records, the notifications will get sent. So we have defined the API version and then uh, we have defined notify for operation create, notify for operation update and for undelete and delete. So we have made all these true. So notifications for create, update, uh, undelete and delete will be sent. And then we have done notify for fields reference. That means uh, these two fields that are referenced in the SQL query that will get sent. And then we are inserting this push topic. So let us just execute it. So yes, uh, this is successful. Our push topic has been created successfully. So now let's go to workbench and uh, then see uh, if we are able to subscribe to this channel. So, so what we'll do is we'll go to workbench.com and uh, we'll see this page. Let me just close all the other windows. And uh, firstly, we'll have to log in using our org. We'll do that. So we have successfully logged in. Uh, now uh, inside queries, uh, we can go to streaming push topics. In the streaming push topics, uh, click on generic subscriptions. And uh, now our uh, channel name was account push topic, right? This is the channel name. Uh, the channel name is the push topic name, which we have defined here. So uh, 
and we'll we'll just uh, as I said earlier, the channel name would be slash topic slash account push topic, the name of the push topic which we created. Then we'll subscribe to this. Uh, so yes, we have successfully subscribed to this channel. Now I'll just clear it. Uh, so uh, as I told, any record that fits in this filter, uh, for that the notification will get sent. So uh, the account is uh, the query is all those accounts that has been created today, where the created date is today. So let me create a new account, and we have defined no notify for operation create as true. So once we create a new account, our date would be today, and uh, a notification would be sent. So let me create a just. Let me just create a new account. Let me name it uh, push topic test and then insert this account. Let me execute highlight it. So our new account has been created now. Let me go to the workbench and see. So you can we can see we have received this notification, and in this notification, uh, we have received the S object where we have got we have got the ID and we have got the name. So these two fields we had defined in the SOPL filter, and uh, those two fields are in our uh, message that is the schema, as I told earlier, and this is the channeling slash topic slash account push note so workbench has its own committee implementations so based on that uh, it is uh, subscribing to this uh, channel so in the next video we will see a tutorial of change data capture and platform events so stay tuned and thanks everyone for uh, please like and subscribe this channel and stay tuned for other videos